What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. That time it's not gonna be a video with limited heroes inside, don't worry. I heard that many players wanted me to show some content without limited heroes and I understand you. So this is the goal of the video. Lately I've been doing a lot of content with Jingle Bell inside and other limited heroes because I wanted to try to push higher in stages in my own account. And I got a lot of fun doing that and so I wanted to share my experience with other players. But don't worry, I'm also doing something some videos without only broken stuff that nobody can buy in the game, only 5% of the player base in fact. So uh, that time it's gonna be about beating Rome 35, not 36 and above because it's gonna be really hard to achieve without limited heroes, uh, but uh, stage 35 is still really uh, really nice to farm because you have a lot of drop rates, if you have a look there you can drop 35% of 5 star piece of gear and 65% of 6 stars and 4% drop rate on legend stuff, 17% on epic ones. In comparison with the stage 40, you are gonna have a double the legend drop rate and only 100% only 6 star gear, but it's gonna be really really a pain to achieve farming the stage 40 without limited heroes. And if you check above the stage 35, the difference is not gonna be that high, so in fact it's really okay at the end of the day to farm only the stage 35. So, something really important important to take into consideration when you start uh, um, battling versus bosses above stage 31 in D Dwarven Ruins, they have a dungeon effect. So if you click here, they are gonna have 50% less HP burning damage. And it, this is gonna be the same for the majority of bosses in the content. Ifrit, Rom, Nidia, Growlin are gonna take 50% less uh, HP burning damage, so forget about using Hezonja in these content. And then you have Marius and Gwyneth who does not have any uh, buff, any any debuff and any buff in the dungeon. So this is going to be different, but today we are going to talk only about Rom 35. Uh, you have other stuff inside though. Uh, that boss, that dungeon, the enemies are going to take some more detonation damage, dealt by burn, 200% more, and bleed damage. So you want to use burn or bleed or both. This is the way to go. So the first thing you want to do is to use your Nordak, of course, because this is the only meter heroes that is mandatory in fact the first one you want to pick in the game and the one you want to play up absolutely everywhere every content in the game pve pvp is just the most amazing hero we have in the game and he is free to play so use him absolutely everywhere and of course you want to focus on his exclusive first until he is exclusive 3 because the exclusive 3 is going to give you more hp on your entire team and so at the end of the day you are going to be more tanky and uh, this is the way to go so, second thing, the boss is going to take some more burn damage and bleed damage, so then you want to use some heroes to deal some burn or bleed damage, because it's that way it's going to be way easier to beat the boss. And so you have many, many heroes who can do some bleed damage. Normally you have a filter there, and you can find the ones that are burn heroes there, and you can use them all. They are all great. Even uh, that guy... I was using him in a previous video, he is amazing if you are using him with other heroes that can deal detonation damage. He's gonna push you a lot and deal crazy damage to the boss and this is a great hero to use in that content. Sadly he is only at level 4 in my account for now so I might do another video trying to increase his damage and show you again how does it work in that specific dungeon. But then you have Anna and she's a great hero, she's gonna grant attack up 40% to your team and increase their burn damage. So if you are planning to use a burn team, she is gonna be great in your team. Of course if you have a gratis, use her because this is the best burn hero in the game in terms of draw and ruins uh, but I'm not gonna cover her in that video uh, then you have gunner he can apply a deep burn too but then his damage are not gonna be that great in comparison with both um, Moloch and Endras if you have them play them they are gonna destroy enemies especially Endras in single target he's gonna deal crazy damage to the bus on the bus wave and also he's gonna help you to clear waves because he can apply deep burn too on them increasing the burn damage taken by 50 
50%. Uh, so he's a great hero and Moloch too because he can also apply deep burn 2 in AoE, deal crazy AoE damage and also increase the burn damage taken by enemies with another debuff on them. So both of them are great in terms of burn damage. Uh, I'm gonna try to use them first and then I'm gonna use also Anna and you know what you can even use Barry because he is gonna push you a lot the enemies on each detonation you are gonna do on them and he's gonna start doing a lot of damage to them so if you have him you can in, you can include him in your team and of course if you have limited heroes use little jack inside this is always gonna be better but this is not the goal of the video so I'm gonna start with three burners for the first test but now this is not gonna be enough I'm gonna need another hero to survive and I'm gonna check in the nameless brotherhood I'm gonna pick Timmy he is only exclusive 2 on my account and he is one of the best support in the games for this kind of content especially if you don't have um, limited heroes in the team. He's gonna basically lower the speed up by 40% on the bus and lower his attack by 40%, his crit rate by 50% and his crit damage by 60% and also you are gonna take less crit damage if he is alive. So this is the best hero to go. Let's begin the fight and let's see how does it work. So of course I have a big account. I have a Kraken account, I have really big stats on my heroes and I have a huge sanctuary. So you might say to me that it's gonna be absolutely broken and you can't replicate that on your account. Uh, try to build your heroes the way I'm gonna show you. And so if you are not able to beat the stage 35 yet, in the future you will be able to and you can replicate the same team to beat the stages, the lower stages between the 31 and the 35. Maybe you are gonna be able to clear the 32, the 33 using the same team with your own account, with your own stats. So this is just to show you some strategies that are working against that dungeon. So basically on the first wave and the second wave you don't want to use your skills with Nordak but sadly I was running the fight in auto and so he used the ultimate so I hope that I'm gonna get the ultimate back in time for the boss wave. So just use your basic attacks at that skill with your uh, Andras and look at that. The damage was still pretty interesting, right? But it was only an attack to uh, debuff enemies, so it's not the, be the best one. So now you want to use um, that one to increase your attack on Moloch and you want to use that with Moloch. High damage to enemies, I am safe and they are taking some more burn damage. So I just have to continue using my basic attacks until they all die and then place to the second wave and so I should get my cooldowns back in time normally. Look at that, only one turn of cooldown on the ultimate of Nordax so normally I should have it in time for the boss wave. So I'm gonna use only that skill because attacking enemies I'm gonna take some poison damage uh, because of Walter and also some damage from them so I want to protect my heroes and I have a huge shield on all of my heroes so now it should be really easy to survive. Uh, uh, you can target the heroes you want, uh, just I don't know, normally in uh, manual I'm gonna target him but just have a look. Yeah, he decided to kill another one so now let's use the ultimate, deal some more AoE damage and now you have to tank but you can because you have a huge shield thanks to Nordak. Basic attack, normally in Otso your heroes are targeting the hero with the less amount of HP remaining. So let's do the same. And a pursuit from Moloch, that's great and already boss wave 29 turns. So I'm gonna do it in Otso and you are gonna see what is gonna happen. I'm gonna use that skill. I'm not gonna be able to kill Nazakma in time so he's gonna steal my buffs. But before, I'm gonna tank the ultimate of the, the attack of the boss and the attack of sub death right there to the left. And so I'm gonna survive and then he's gonna steal my buffs but I'm gonna remove the buffs thanks to the first active skill of Timmy. This is why he is also a great hero so you are gonna be able to remove the buffs on him and kill him after. So let's just run in auto and see what happens. No damage on the first two attacks, now he removed my buffs, I can apply the shield, I removed the buffs on the Zakma and he is dead and now I only have to concentrate on the boss. So I'm taking a lot of damage, I almost lost my uh, Endress but I'm gonna have my buffs back and look at the damage that the boss is taking right now. And he has all the debuffs on him so I'm safe, I will never die now. And so... 
I just have to wait, my heroes are gonna do the job. Look at that, the damage inflicted by Endras. 77 turns and the fight is over. So this is not the only team that can work. If you don't have Timmy, you can try to replace him by another hero, an epic one. I'm gonna show that to you in a moment. You can try to use this Lee instead. And of course it's gonna work. So I'm gonna use that skill. Now I'm gonna do that. Only a basic attack, I don't want to kill them too fast that time, so I'm not buffing my Moloch. And now I just have to tank and use my basic attacks again, and so I'm gonna be able to kill them not too fast to get my cooldowns back for the second wave. So this is the way to go, 22 turns. Next attack, next wave, I'm using the shield again, and let's just run the fight in auto for now and just to see what they are doing. But I'm gonna stop the auto mode just to be sure that I'm not using that skill. If you are doing the fight in auto, make sure that you are not using the, the ultimate of Nordak on the second wave. Okay, boss wave, I'm gonna run the fight in auto and we are gonna check what is gonna happen. Look at that, 40% less attack on all enemies, resistance down. She's also gonna be able to lower the speed of the boss. But I got a horrified, so it might not work that time. Okay, damage immunity in time, and so my heroes are still alive for now. She's gonna lower the attack again of the boss, and so I just have to wait until the fight is over. I lost one damage dealer, but I still have two, so maybe it's still gonna work. In order to work with that team, you need a huge speed on your Nordak. This is the only thing you are gonna need and a ton of HP, so you are gonna provide a stronger shield to your heroes. And look at that, it is still working. The boss is dead. A bit more turns, I lost one hero, but it was still doable. So that time I'm gonna use three bleeders instead. I'm gonna use Nidro, Lysander, and Grace. So I should be tanky because Grace is gonna give to my heroes the consolidation too, and she's gonna increase their bleed damage. Lysander is gonna pursue every time my heroes are gonna take a turn, and so he's gonna deal crazy damage to them passively. And my Nidro is gonna apply a ton of bleed on them, and so uh, it might do the job too. So let's check that. One more time, I was running the fight in auto, and so I used the ultimate of Nordak. This is not that bad, just had to not kill them too fast. I'm gonna save my cooldowns, and I should be able to beat them easy. So you can use the ultimate of Lysander every turn, because he has no cooldown on it, and so basically he's just gonna one-shot every enemy. Look at the passive damage of Lysander, though. He's destroying them. He attacks only random enemies, but still it does the job. So, second wave, I want to use that skill again, so I'm gonna protect my heroes. I'm gonna uh, just in case... No, I'm gonna use that to increase my speed a bit. Um, I'm gonna use the consolidation too, just in case... You can do that! Look at that, Consolidation 2 on all my heroes and a big shield, so normally they are super safe. I'm gonna use the ultimate of Nidrold with high damage. Uh, let's go one shot one enemy, okay, he decided to focus on one Senna. Basic attack, basic attack again, and he is just killing absolutely everyone. 33 turns and boss wave already, so let's run the fight in auto and let's check what happens. So he's gonna remove my buffs again. That's not bad, because I have an extra shield now. And it's just a matter of time before he loses the buffs and before I kill Nezakma. And I have my buffs again. So now I'm safe. Only the boss remaining and now he's gonna start taking a huge amount of bleed damage. He's gonna die in a second. And he has two bleeds only, when Nidrol is gonna use the ultimate, he's gonna die. 
Let's go. 80 turns. 80 turns, and if you check the damage, more for, from Lysander because he is passively attacking enemies. And a pretty interesting damage from, from Nidrold. And I was using an epic hero and that guy inside, a no limited hero. So that works really, really well. And you can even change the heroes in your team if you don't have one of them. For example, I'm going to remove that guy and I'm going to use the hero that absolutely nobody is using. And this is going to be her. And you are going to see that she performs really well in this content. So let's first use that skill. This is what you want to do. Uh, you want to lower the attack of enemies just in case. Uh, keep your skills with her and transform with her use the ultimate and look at that every time you take a turn with your heroes she is pursuing all enemies with her ultimate and she is uh, resetting the duration of the bleeds on them and so in fact during the fight they are gonna have a 10 bleeds and they will never lose bleed if he if she can play in fact and this is super strong so they are gonna die really fast thanks to all the bleeds they have above their heads so you have to be careful when you are using that though, because if you kill them too fast, you are not going to get your cooldowns in time. And it might be the case now. I won't have the skill with my Nordak. So I'm going to use the Consolidation with Grace. It might help me to survive. Basic attack. I want to use that skill with Nidral. Hope I can survive that. I'm going to have to use the shield of my Nordak now, or the otherwise I'm dead. And now, just use my basic attacks. And the wave is over. So place to the post wave again. Run the fight in auto. And we are going to see what is going to happen with Elena that time. Look at the layers of bleeds on them. They will never lose bleed layers. Okay, Nazakma stole the counter-attack of my Elena, so it might fail. Okay, now I have my buffs, so it's gonna be safe. And look at that, 10 bleed layers on the boss. And he will have 10 layers during the entire fight, and so he will take huge damage every turn. And that's just how it works. Just have to to use multiple bleeders in the team and look at the damage the boss is taking thanks to that. And you have the same amount of turns as before but I was using Elena instead of Lysander and when you check the damage, 36 million, 99 million on him and this is close to be the same as before, right? And also if you have Valentina, the hero from the Elemental City, the bleeder one in the Forgotten, you can use her instead of one of your hero in the team, it's gonna have the same result. But if you still struggle using this kind of team, what can you use? What is the best team to use in that content without limited heroes? And there is one team that is working pretty well. And I'm going to show that to you directly. You want to use also, do a mix between bleeds to deal high damage to the boss, poisons, because poisons are going to do some interesting damage, some nice damage to enemies, but also Poison layers are gonna lower the attack of enemies. So if you are using a Nita, for example, you are gonna lower by a lot of damage inflicted by the boss. Then you want to use your Timmy, of course. By the way, if you don't have Timmy, if you don't want to use Vizli, you can use another hero instead. Uh, for example, you can use that guy, he's gonna reduce the damage he's gonna take and he's gonna tank the damage for, for your heroes. So that, that's a great hero to use. You have other heroes, you have Freak for example that you can use. There we go, you can use Freak, he's gonna also lower a lot the damage of the boss, 40% less attack and 50% less crit rate, so it's gonna help you a lot as well. If you don't have all the bleeders I told, I talked about before, you can use Hertha instead, she is a nice bleeder too. You can even use Natalie, why not? And you know what, I'm pretty sure that you can even use your 4 nail, because on the basic attack he's gonna lower the attack of the boss, he can also lower the speed of the boss by 20%, apply a shield to your heroes and apply, a, it is a tenacity buff, I think it is a 60% tenacity or a defense up, I don't remember exactly, but he's gonna help you a lot. 
Even her, she is a great bleeder, so if you have her, you can use her, of course, she is gonna start doing crazy damage. You can also use his arrow if you have his arrow. This is another great bleeder, especially if you have exclusives on him, he's gonna deal high bleed damage, but remember that using him, you are gonna need a crazy effect hit on him to apply the debuffs, so it might be really interesting to use him with your Vizli because she can lower the resistance of the boss by 50%. The combo of these two is gonna be really, really strong in that content. If you want, you can also use your Walter instead of your Nida because he has something more than her. He has more damage reduction on the boss if you have some poison layers on him. So it might be really a strong, a strong strategy to use him in your team if you want to lower even higher the damage of enemies. And you can also use your Mamuk, right? He's gonna also lower the attack of the boss by 40%, apply an extra shield as wind does when you take too much damage on heroes. He can also increase the speed of your heroes by 40% and apply a taunt on himself so enemies, single target enemies are gonna be forced to target him and he is gonna be immortal so during waves it might help. You can also use Chardonnay, and this is a great hero to play in that content because he's gonna do great bleed damage in single target. He's also gonna increase the bleed damage taken by the boss by 50%, lower his attack by 40%, increase the speed of your heroes by 40%, apply a shield on them, and this is just an amazing hero also because he has uh, his bleeds or scaling over his defense and he is converting a part of his HP into defense and so he's gonna be really tanky and deal high damage. This is a great hero to use in there. Using that core team, you are gonna have a ton of protections on your heroes thanks to Nordak. You are gonna have a speed buff and an attack down from that guy on the bus, so you might be really safe. You are gonna have a speed down thanks to Timmy also, and some poison damage, so you are gonna deal some more damage and lower even higher, even more the damage of the bus. So it might be really strong to use that core team, and then you can choose the heroes you want for on the last pot. Maybe, maybe to deal a bit more damage maybe to have more survivability it's up to you to decide what heroes you want to use if you need some more damage reduction on enemies you can use some heroes from the hidden wave faction you can use also Seth he's gonna be an amazing hero for this content uh, he's gonna apply wet and cold on the boss so he's gonna deal less uh, less skill damage and basic attack damage you are gonna have some extra damage on the basic attack with your heroes and extra shields extra heals so this is a great hero to play in that content. Or just in case if you want to be safer you can use some heroes to control enemies. You have a Quinlan, of course he is an HP burner hero but he is still a great hero to control enemies so you are gonna be able to freeze Nezekma on the boss wave and he will never steal your buffs. Or you can just add another damage dealer for example that guy and it might be really strong too. So this is the kind of perfect team I was talking about, so let's check the efficiency of the team. As always, first wave you want to use the shield only, basic attack, you want to use the ultimate and look at the damage, this is poison damage and she performs so great. So I'm not going to use the ultimate, they are going to die with just because of the layers of poisons. So I just can use my basic attacks and my heroes should recover their skills in time, normally. I don't have the shield of Nordak that time, but it's not that bad. I still have other stuff in stock. So I'm gonna use the first active skill of her and the ultimate of Nidral to deal some extra damage to them. And now apply an extra shield with my Lysander, uh, with my Chardonnay. And now just have to use some basic attacks, they should die uh, really fast. Uh, I'm gonna use the first acti active skill of my Nidral. And there we are on the boss wave, so I'm gonna run the fight in auto and we are gonna check what is gonna happen. So he stole my buffs, he has no buffs anymore thanks to Timmy, a first active skill and now plays to the boss and how many turns do I need to kill him? So if I can use the ultimate of Chardonnay, he's gonna have some deep bleed too on him and so he's gonna start taking a huge amount of damage and look at the efficiency of the team. 7 poisons, 9 poisons, so he has a th almost 30% less attack thanks to the poisons only and he's taking huge bleed damage. 77 turns with that team. This is an amazing team, I love that. 
And you know what? You can even use your Dakota in this content. She's gonna be amazing because if you have the exclusive too, she can passively revive one of your hero per wave. This is gonna be great. And also she can increase the speed of your heroes by 40%, their attack by 40%, deal some AOE poisons to damage to enemies, and deal high single target damage on the ultimate. She is a great hero to use, especially if you don't have a speed buff in your team, you can replace your the Chardonnay inside of the team by your need roll if you want it so you are gonna have bleak uh, bleed damage speed buff attack buff uh, speed down uh, all the offensive attacks uh, all the offensive debuffs on the boss uh, big shields and uh, everything to protect your heroes and high damage this is gonna be so perfect to use this kind of team so that time I'm gonna use her instead of Nidrod or Lysander and I'm gonna use Dakota to increase my speed, my attack and deal some extra damage to the boss and just to protect my heroes just in case I'm gonna need that. I'm gonna apply some smart casting to the team just in case so it might be really uh, nice to see. I'm gonna use uh, that skill first there, I want to uh, not to use it now. On her I don't care, on that guy I want to avoid using that, I want to use only one time that skill. On the second wave I don't want to use that skill and on Timmy I don't want to use that skill, I want to keep it for the last wave and I don't want to use this, all his skills in fact and on Dakota I want her to use not that skill not that one only the basic attack on the first two waves and it should be okay so let's just run the fight in auto and let's check what happens First wave, I apply the shield, deal some poison damage to enemies and now just over time with the poison layers they are gonna die Second wave I don't have the shield anymore, so it might fail. But they have some poison, so I'm gonna take less damage on my heroes. I have the shield now on the second turn, and so it should be okay. Nice bleed damage from Alicia, though. Boss wave. So let's check what is gonna happen. Poison damage on everyone, so they are gonna deal less damage. I had a speed buff, but now I don't have it because of uh, Nazakma. I removed his buffs, and now I'm only on the boss in one second. Okay, boss only. 90% HP remaining, I almost lost my uh, Alicia. I have my buffs, and now just have to concentrate on the boss. He has a ton of poisons, all the, the offensive debuffs, and so I should be safe now. And it was working as well. Of course, instead of Felicia, if I am using Nidrold, it's gonna be way easier because she plays multiple times in a row and she, she is losing some buffs. And as you saw during the battle, she lost a, lo a ton of HP and she was close to die. But just in case, uh, she would have been revived by the perceive of my exclusive 2 on Dakota. So it should have worked as well. And you know what, just for the fun, let's try to use another hero and try to see how long can I survive. So I'm gonna put some small casting and I'm, I'm gonna try to not use the ultimate of my heroes just to see if how long can I survive on the boss wave. And there we go, this is the boss wave. I'm not gonna use the ultimate of my Chardonnay and my Nita and so we are gonna see how long can I survive with the buffs of my heroes only. It might be pretty fun to see. So now my HAL 9000 is gonna start protecting my heroes and nullifying a bit of damage. So I should be safer than before. He can't die in one attack. He's gonna uh, enter the second phase just in case. Yeah, he is in the second phase. So now he's not gonna protect anymore my heroes, but he is still uh, alive. And after many turns, he's gonna enter again the first phase and he's gonna start to protecting my heroes again. So now he can protect my heroes again. And so I'm pretty safe, I will never die. I'm pretty sure that I will never die. Without using the ultimate of my heroes, the fight is gonna take forever. But using that, this is just to show you how strong can you be with your team. And look, 
I have the damage immunity most of the time and the rest of time I can just tank with my uh, HAL 9000. In fact, my HAL 9000 is super slow. So most of the, t the time he's gonna have the, uh, the ally protection and the damage immunity so he can protect my heroes without taking any damage. And the boss is dying over time, so even if you are lacking some damage, it's okay if you have the right heroes to protect your team. So it's really efficient, right? You have another team that can work, but of course I won't talk about it in that video because you need Indra and Dianmu. This is another kind of team for dungeons. So I wanted to talk only about that. And it was doable. Look at that. You, super safe using this kind of team. You have all the, the offensive debuffs on enemies. You have also a speed down. You have a, a speed buff on your heroes, a lot of shields and damage immunity. And HAL 9000 is protecting a lot of your heroes. So if you have that, you can use that. Of course, it's gonna work. Stage 35, you are gonna need some uh, average stats on heroes, in fact. I'm gonna show you now, explain to you how does it work, what you want to focus on your heroes. All the heroes I showed you before in the in the video in every team needs first to have a lot of attack and mastery and effect hit to place the layers of uh, poisons or bleeds or burns. Uh, if you have a Lysander, of course he's not gonna need some effect hit because he can't put any layer of bleed on the boss. He's gonna deal only bleed damage directly, so you need to increase the attack and the mastery first and on other heroes the effect hit. You don't need crit rate, crit damage, the more the mastery the higher the damage you are gonna do with your heroes. 48k attack, yeah this is maybe not achievable for everyone but at least I don't have a huge mastery on, on her. And then the speed on damage dealers doesn't really matter. On your Nordak, you just need as much speed as you can and HP also. The more the HP, the bigger the shield he's going to provide to your team. This is the only thing that matters. On your uh, Chardonnay, if you want to use a Chardonnay, he is a bit special because he's going to scale his bleed damage over his defense and convert a part of his HP in defense. So you want to put on him a lot of defense and HP. This is the way to go with that guy. And he's going to start doing a nice damage if you are using him this way. On the Lysander, you want also to increase his speed because he's going to convert the speed above 1500 into damage. So you want to do that. Uh, so he's going to have more damage if you increase the speed. This is the only hero in the game scaling the, his damage on his speed. So that's a great hero also for that. Then on your heroes such as Timmy or Weasley, you need a lot of speed and a huge amount of effect hit. This is the only thing you need on them to apply debuffs. If you are not able to apply debuffs, you might die and lose. So th this is really important. Then, if you want to have even higher damage, you are, remember that you are using some, some daughters. And if you want to increase the damage of your daughters, you need one Mastery Surge Aura in your team to increase the mastery of all your heroes. This is important. I had known in the team I showed you. You want also to, inc to put some skill master aura if you can afford at least one. This is the best way to increase your damage. Have one skill master aura, even zero star of on one of your hero in the team. One combat vanguard aura. Uh, this is that one. Uh, one with zero star, you are gonna get a ton of extra damage thanks to the 16% increase uh, damage taken on the bus. This is really important too. So one combat vanguard if you can afford it, one skill master aura if you can afford it, and one mastery surge aura if you can also afford it. On your daughters, you need to have only that blue aura, the mastery expert aura. The, it's a really easy one to craft and it's gonna increase by a lot of damage you are gonna deal with your daughters. Every daughter needs that aura. And in fact, you know what, that's pretty much it. You need to increase that these stats on your heroes 
and then build the right team and it's always gonna work or it's gonna depend on your stats and not the heroes you are gonna play and so you are gonna have to be patient to wait until you have better gear more sanctuary points and you are gonna be able one day to beat that boss without limited heroes so I hope that you enjoyed the video if it's the case don't forget to like comment and subscribe have a nice day and see you in the next one bye bye